Hey everyone, I'm Ian Norman from LonelySpec.com. You've probably seen some of the Milky Way photos from my astrophotography workshops on my website. One of the things that usually holds true with most of these photographs is that they're usually taken in really dark locations in the California desert. All of my workshops are held in places that are specifically chosen for their low levels of light pollution and beautiful landscapes. Well, what happens when we want to try astrophotography in a place that has really heavy light pollution? Believe it or not, it's actually possible to take astrophotos in some pretty terrible conditions. This is a photograph taken from Palos Verdes, which is really close to the city of Los Angeles. The location rates pretty poorly on the light pollution charts, and I generally wouldn't recommend trying to take astrophotos from a location like this. You'll get much better results if you take the time to visit a place with much darker skies. To give you an idea of what it was really like when I was taking photos in these conditions, let's take a look at the raw, unprocessed version of the photo. So basically, it's impossible to see the Milky Way. In order to capture this much detail of the Milky Way in such terrible conditions, I use a method of exposure called Exposed to the Right, which is usually initialized as ETTR. Simply put, ETTR is a method of exposure where we intentionally overexpose the photograph, but not so much that we completely blow everything out to white. It's called Exposed to the Right because the histogram of the image will appear as if everything shifted over to the right side of the graph, rather than peaking in the center like most normal exposures. ETTR is beneficial for this type of photography because it forces the camera to gather as much light as possible. As long as we're not overexposing so much to where we blow out all the detail, the larger amount of light will ensure that our photographs have a better signal to noise ratio. So even though the photo looks too bright straight out of the camera, we can easily fix this in post-processing. To start, I use a standard Milky Way exposure of 30 seconds at f2.8 and ISO 6400. These are the same exposure settings that I use to start all of my Milky Way photographs, regardless of the conditions. For example, this is a photograph taken in a really dark location with these same exposure settings. And this light polluted shot actually uses the same exposure as well. And as it turns out, the overexposure will actually prove to be beneficial because it means that we gathered more signal in our photo. So you can usually start with these settings and adjust accordingly. This exposure setting is so bright that you're clipping off all the data and your highlight warning is flashing at you, there's a couple things to note. One, your location is probably worse than mine, so you should really try to find someplace darker. If you still want to keep going, you can reduce the exposure by reducing your ISO one stop to ISO 3200, or maybe even two stops if you need to to ISO 1600. Try to keep the shutter speed and the aperture the same, because this will make sure that you're still trying to maximize the amount of light that the camera is collecting. Once you have your exposures, you should be ready to start post-processing. I'm using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom for this example, but pretty much any raw editor will work. You can see that our histogram for this image is pushed all the way to the right because we use the exposed to the right method. The first thing to do is to reduce the exposure slider so that the histogram sits just left of the center. Then let's fix the white balance. We'll start by pushing the saturation and vibrance really high and then adjust the white balance tone and tint sliders until you see the widest range of colors in the image. It shouldn't be too blue and it shouldn't be too yellow. This should give us a nice neutral white balance and we can reset the saturation and vibrant sliders back to neutral for now. Next, we should add some contrast to the image. Since we have so much light pollution, we're really going to need to get pretty extreme with the contrast adjustments and I'm also going to give the tone curve a really steep S-curve to create as much contrast as possible. This will overly accentuate the vignetting on the image, so you'll probably have some really dark falloff on the corners. We can correct this by tweaking the vignetting correction sliders until we think it looks a little more natural. Now that I have the tones a little bit more even, I'm going to go back and tweak the exposure again just a little bit to make the sky a bit darker, and then I'll go back and add some more vignetting correction. And that just about covers the basic tweaks that I used to make this final image. If we hadn't used ETTR and overexposed the image, and instead made a shorter exposure, the final results would not have been as good. Here's a comparison of our first image alongside a more neutral image that used a lower ISO and a shorter shutter speed. In this case, the image on the left used a 30 second exposure at ISO 6400, and the image on the right used a 15 second exposure at ISO 1600. The darker exposure actually looks better straight out of the camera. It's not overexposed, and you can actually just barely see some detail of the Milky Way. 
But if we apply the same adjustments to both images and match their brightnesses, the image with the shorter exposure and the lower ISO actually has higher levels of noise and you can't see as much detail in the Milky Way despite it being shot with a lower ISO. This is a good demonstration of how the exposed to the right method can help our astrophotos and how it's possible to take photographs of the Milky Way in some pretty terrible conditions. Remember though that there's pretty much no substitute for a dark sky location. Your astrophotos will turn out much better and they'll need much less post-processing. I hope this video was a good lesson about the effects of light pollution. It's a growing problem that may someday make it impossible to see the Milky Way with the naked eye. If you're interested in learning more about the spread of light pollution and how to help, check out the International Dark Sky Association at darksky.org. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out the link to my online class in the description below. See you later.